Welcome to part one of this lesson on atomic absorption spectrophotometry. Our main goal in this lesson is to provide you with a general understanding of an atomic absorption spectrophotometer. Before we begin, let's set out a couple of specific objectives for this lesson. First and foremost, it is important that you be able to recognize an atomic absorption spectrometer when you see one. Although their appearance will vary from vendor to vendor, there are a couple of dead giveaways that will help you out. Second, there are a couple of vital components that you may need to manipulate in the course of an experiment. To do this, you need to know what they are called and where they are located. Finally, I will show you how to disassemble several components that are commonly taken apart for maintenance. Our atomic absorption spectrophotometer is a Perkin Elmer Analyst 200. This instrument shows all of the hallmarks of an atomic absorption spectrometer. You will note that there is a ventilation hood above the instrument. This is very important because it prevents heavy metals from being spread throughout the lab. You will also note that there is a drain tube where the chemical waste is carried to a nearby carboy. There are some interesting uh, safety features built into this carboy that we will discuss in a later video. The gases on the left side of the instrument are acetylene and compressed air. The AA has three hoses coming out of it, red, blue, and black. The black is attached to compressed air. The red hose is attached to acetylene and the blue hose is typically attached to nitrogen dioxide. However, because we don't have any applications in our laboratory uh, that require nitrogen dioxide, the blue hose is not attached to anything. Now before we dig any further into this instrument, I do want to call your attention to one other component. You'll notice on the top left hand corner of the instrument that there's a little warning sign and then a big red button. This big red button is what I like to call the uh-oh button. Uh, this button will actually extin extinguish the flame in the instrument uh, when the computer stops responding. The inner workings of an atomic absorption spectrophotometer can be broken down into two distinct systems, sample introduction and optics. Let's start by looking at the sample introduction system. The image you are now looking at illustrates the entire sample introduction system of an AA. You have gas inlets, a sample inlet, a spray chamber, and a burner. In atomic absorption, aqueous metal solution is drawn into the nebulizer via the Venturi effect due to the gases flowing through it, in this case acetylene and air. Within the spray chamber, a fine mist of sample is produced with the bulk of the sample solution being routed to a waste container. The aspirated sample then impacts the surface, normally a hard bead of some sort, where the size of the droplets is reduced even further. This material then passes through the baffles. The baffles are the impeller looking objects seen here in the picture. And these uh, baffles will stop all but, all but the finest of droplets. The sample, along with the flammable mixture of gases, is then fed to the burner where the mixture is incinerated. As you can see, the burner head can be removed and replaced. Different protocols will call for different burner lengths. Otherwise, the only maintenance you should have to do on a burner should be limited to scraping out the slot with a business card. The optics are the part of the instrument that controls the light being passed through the sample, selects the wavelength, and detects how much light has been absorbed. The optical system begins with the HCL, or the hollow cathode lamp. This is a very expensive consumable and should be handled with great care. These lamps are special because they are considered spectral line sources. In other words, they only produce wavelengths that correspond to the absorptions of a given metal. 
Each lamp is typically only capable of analyzing one element. However, there are a couple of multi-element lamps out there. We will talk more about these lamps in another video. The picture you are looking at right now is the insides of an older Perkin Elmer AA spectrometer. While the layout is a little bit different from our service model, the design is very similar. First, notice the location of our sample introduction system as illustrated by the red box. Another red box has been drawn to show where the hollow cathode lamp is. The yellow boxes indicate the presence of half mirrors. Half mirrors are able to transmit 50% of the light shining on them and reflect the other 50%. This image gives a clearer illustration of how a half mirror works. Notice the alternating vertical bars of mirrored and transparent glass. The blue box indicates where we have some regular mirrors. And the green box shows where the diffraction grating is located. And finally, the purple box shows where the PMT is, the photomultiplier tube, which is our detector for this instrument. We will talk more about how this component works in a later video. Now if we track the path of light from the hollow cathode lamp to the detector, we notice something curious. Why do we have so many extra parts? There seems to be a couple of mirrors that are not accounted for in the light path. It turns out that this spectrometer has a reference lamp, as well as the uh, hollow cathode lamp, and they combine with the light from the hollow cathode lamp and ultimately make their way to the detector. As illustrated here, it would appear to be quite complicated. However, there is a shutter system that is motor operated, allowing the system to oscillate very quickly between measuring the reference and the sample. It should also be noted that this particular instrument is equipped with an adjustable slit width. I highly recommend that you consider watching this short video several times until you are comfortable with all the terminology. You will be expected to follow the light paths, identify components, and explain their purpose on the midterm exam. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.